Okay, big news in my continuing coverage of AMD's FSR, which I know a lot of my subscribers, thank you guys, you're beautiful people, are interested in, which is specifically the launch titles. There's seven of them and we have a list, uh, as well as upcoming titles that are coming soon with no specific release date uh, attached other than they're not launch titles, and a large list of developers who are supporting this tech. Very interesting stuff. Now, where's this information coming from and should we trust it? Well, I found it in a video cards article, which says that they initially saw some details about this posted on Twitter by Vegeta, but when I tried to follow their link, it came up as a dead link. So I don't know what to make of that and whether that means this is untrustworthy, but I, here's why I'm actually pretty confident we're okay here. Because at Video Cards, they said, as soon as we uh, learned that there's already a list of FSR games, we have reached out to our sources for the remaining titles, which is quite impressive. Well, okay, the quite impressive part is subjective and I will give my subjective opinions, which are always the best subjective opinions. Actually guys, comment on this video. I'm sure there's gonna be such a wide range of opinions on whether this is a great list or a, or a, or a disaster. Anyway, <laughs> I'm really interested what you all think about this. Anyway, but the point is that Video Cards is saying, saying that they didn't just get it from this tweet. This tweet inspired them to reach out to their own sources and get a increased list. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be good. The folks here at Video Cards seem pretty confident with this and they have a very detailed list. Let's jump into these details. Okay. We've got FSR support at launch, a list of seven games, and I'm gonna make myself disappear so you can also see the uh, coming soon titles. Hey, I snapped correctly this time, messed up yesterday. Anyway, we've got 22 racing series, Anno 1800, Evil Genius 2, Godfall, which is the only one that we really knew beforehand. Kings, is, is that King Shunt or King's Hunt or both? Terminator Resistance and the Rift Breaker. Now my quick, Hot take on this is I don't care personally about any of these games. No, maybe I'm just uninformed and some of these are great, but I honestly had no intention of playing any of these and I don't own any of them. Anyway, F but uh, <laughs> other hot take, hey, that's more, more uh, launch titles than, um, more launch titles than I think DLSS 1.0 had, but another hot take, AMD is not competing against DLSS 1.0 at launch. They're coming in a couple years late. So, hey, there you go. Let's look at the coming soon titles. Asterigos, Baldur's Gate 3, Dota 2, Edge of Eternity, Far Cry 6, Farming Simulator 22, Forspoken, Mist, Necromunda, Hired Gun. This is a big deal I'll talk about in just a second. Resident Evil Village. Swordsman Remake, and Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt. So in these coming soon list, I'm a lot more impressed and more interested in some of these games. Let me talk more specifically about why Necromunda is a big deal. I am 99.9% .9 sure that that supports DLSS, which means this could give us a chance for a direct comparison between DLSS and FSR. However, I'm gonna point out that we might not be able to do that on an NVIDIA GPU. You might need an AMD GPU and a NVIDIA GPU to compare. Whereas, uh, you know, it was implied at their launch event that NVIDIA GPUs could support this tech and they can. It's gonna be up to NVIDIA to make that happen. And I'll give you guys a little update on that which I saw, found over here at, at WCCF Tech, they say that AMD has not yet released the source code of FSR to NVIDIA, so GeForce users can expect to wait a bit longer for optimization to land once the tech launches. And the source code is posted on GitHub on the 22nd, as only Godfall has currently been optimized. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm hoping that since uh, Necromunda is a coming soon title, I'm hoping that by the time it, its FSR support launches that NVIDIA will have hopefully optimized their drivers a bit to, to make it run since I only have an RTX card. So personally for me, you know, <laughs> this will be easier to, to test um, if it runs on NVIDIA cards. Anyway, other thoughts on this list? Um, Far Cry 6, there's a big name. Um, and uh, okay, Dota 2. This is interesting to me because Dota 2, some people might be like, well, why would you possibly need uh, FSR support in a game as easy to run as Dota 2? And that brings me to one of my main thoughts on, uh, you know, I'm even gonna pop into the screen here and say, Let, let's talk for a minute, guys. So why is it a big deal to support a game like Dota 2 that's so easy to run? Well, this is where FSR 
can actually have a win over, over DLSS, even if its image quality is by no means equaling it. Low-end GPU support. DLSS, the lowest end hardware it supports is an RTX 2060, which is a pretty good graphics card. It can already run games at high or even max settings at 1080p without DLSS, right? So the game, people who really need a frame rate boost and are willing to trade off visual quality to get it are people running older GPUs or integrated graphics. And FSR is supposed to be supporting that, right? Older graphics cards, integrated graphics. So, and especially in an esports title like Dota 2, where frame rate is king. So if you're somebody who's been struggling to maybe get 60 frames per second on integrated graphics in a game like Dota 2, kicking on FSR, I mean, most people I know who are seriously competitive in esports, they already turn graphic settings all the way down to get a competitive advantage in frame rate. So getting a little bit more smearing on your image for increased frame rate, especially if you're on super low end hardware, but you're trying to be competitive, that is a big deal that FSR can offer that DLSS doesn't. So there's my hot take on a place where FSR can win over DLSS, straight up win, even if the image quality is worse. Okay guys, let's hop in to the developer support and this is where I'm most impressed I'll disappear again. Okay, I'm not gonna run read through all 44 of these out loud, but notice there are 44 of them and I've got some thoughts here as well. So one thing is many of these game, uh, game developers are people that I've never heard of, which means probably, give me your thoughts in the comment section, that there's small developers supporting this, which in my opinion, lends credence to AMD's claim that this is easy to implement and will have broad support. Because if small time developers that I haven't heard of are committed to supporting this, that must mean it's not gonna be some huge development cost to implement. The other thing I wanna mention is that while many of these do seem like smaller, lesser known developers, there's big ones on here too. We've got, Ubisoft, is it, U it's Ubisoft, right? Not Ubisoft, Ubisoft, anyway. <laughs> Ubisoft, pronunciation not important. We've got, I'll probably miss some big ones here, but we've got Valve, who at least at one point in their history developed games, <laughs> and some pretty good ones. <laughs> uh, we've got Obsidian Entertainment. We've got uh, Electronic Arts with their Frostbite engine. We've got Capcom. And uh, I've heard of Nixus, you know, we've got some, some games, uh, Crystal Dynamics, we got some people that I have actually heard of here and developed some major games. So uh, leave your thoughts on the development list in the, in the uh, comment section as well here. But again, I think this brings me to my final thoughts about game support and developer support here, which is the fact that this developer list is so big right now, again, we don't have any dates attached to when they'll actually get the support, but um, th this is where I think FSR can really compete with DLSS before the image quality does, or if, you know, we don't know if it'll ever get developed to the point uh, where it'll have more temporal data or maybe some machine learning in it. Uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens. But again, broad support, if like every major title or even minor title with small studios starts coming out with support of this, if this becomes just another graphic setting that's available in virtually every game, that's gonna be really important, especially because like I mentioned earlier, the low end hardware support, integrated graphics, older GPUs, if they're the people who are more willing to trade off the visual quality. People buying an RTX 3080 or 3090 aren't necessarily the people who want a slightly grainy smeared looking image, even using DLSS 2.0. I know some of you use it, and I'm not criticizing that. I'm just saying there's a lot of people who are, are, are willing to actually take the frame rate hit to keep the graphics sharp. Whereas if you're on old hardware, just and I just wanna play the game, guys, I just wanna play the game, this could let you play the game and have it look fairly good. And you know, I think that can be a win, the broad support and the support on lower end hardware. What do you guys think about all of this? I'm sure there's a million thoughts about this in the comment section. I'm looking forward to June 22nd. Uh, I read all the comments on my channel, reply to as many as I can. Special thank you to subscribers and to channel members for supporting. 
I hope all of you have an excellent day.